Hey good people, I thought I'd show you this since it just came up. I'm working on this Alan Eden guitar. I've already done a setup on it and I've noticed you hear that buzz and it goes all the way up uh, the neck. It's not with a specific fretted note or something like that. The neck is perfectly straight with the right amount of relief and um, the frets are level so there's no issues anymore and so this buzz that I'm hearing is because of this contraption here the Tomastic not the Tomastic that's a cello bridge the um, the Tom the Tunomatic um, and I thought this kind of illustrates why modders and i have a few of you on who come to these videos um, replace the bridges relatively quickly when they're modding, modding a guitar particularly on these les pauls or anything with a tunematic on it um, i would say the first thing that gets changed are the tuners probably the second thing are the pickups and everybody has their own fetish fetish scenarios over pickups and then a lot of times the bridge gets changed as well now this is a very typical cheap uh tomastic keep saying tomastic um tunomatic bridge there are two components to it there's the bridge here and then the stop tailpiece here this is just held in with friction and you can see on here it's got these v saddles on here now another reason why it might buzz and i've gone through and filed all of these saddles so that the strings run clean. Uh, a lot of people are switching to roller saddles for this reason. Uh, you can get burrs on the edge, which sometimes stops the flow of string vibration and causes weird little sounds, buzzes, um, impedance with the tone. Also, you got to make sure the brake angle over the back um, is such that it doesn't clash with the back of the bridge. I'll go to a, a better view here. See that there? There's, if there's clearance under there, just. But you don't want it sitting flat on the back of the bridge. That will change your intonation. So this has got one of these weird buzzes, probably on this string and this string. After doing all the neck setup, fret work, and all that, um just can't get it out and it's because there's a lot of moving parts in these bridges you can see down in here you have screws washers and then you've got this saddle uh, piece in here that moves back and forth there there's a spring also that holds the screws in and so there's a lot of potential to rattle so a lot of people um, either, either immediately they just do it as a practice switch at least, at least this part out sometimes this as well but normally just this one there's a lot of options um, you can get you can spend anywhere from twelve dollars on amazon to a hundred two hundred dollars for the expensive ones um, you know there there are wilkinson roller saddles with brass saddle pieces on there uh, that you probably get for twenty twenty five you can play probably $40 for a Goto or Gota. Uh, and then on up, you know, there are sort of um, recreation Gibson uh, bridges. What is it? The AB, whatever it is, piece that's recreated. Sometimes with brass or um, titanium saddles. And that's an, another issue. It's not just all the moving parts in this design, but also um, the fact that uh, a lot of the cheap uh, bridges are some sort of alloy often referred to as Chinese pot metal which is a bit of an anomaly because a lot of times they're made in other Asian countries and um, you know a large component of the metal composition can be zinc um, and other alloys uh, whereas a lot of the nice replacement bridges are steel or titanium steel uh, and they have less, a better design without all the moving parts. You can see on these saddles, if I get close in, 
Um, there's a lot of opportunity in here for you know weird vibration. You can see that the the way they're cut is not too clean. So I mean, there are a lot of people. I've I've actually talked to a guy, and he says he immediately switches these out and just gets a roller saddle, um, and that fixes all his problems. However, the roller saddles are really designed. If you have a tremolo system like a Bixby behind the um, the bridge, uh, I'm not sure if you're really gaining anything. Um, maybe with string bending, if, you, if you're an extreme bender, uh, or perhaps just not getting these burrs in the saddles. But most people who switch to roller saddles is because they have a Bixby or some kind of tremolo system behind the bridge and they want an, a cleaner transition of the string going back and forward as the as the um, whammy bar is pulling the strings back and forth. I can see going for a roller bridge in that situation. Um, however, this probably could be improved even if you get a, just another higher grade um, Tudomatic style bridge, which is what I think I will probably do with this guitar um, another thing people do I don't do it because I mean you can pick up something like this relatively cheap some people put candle wax in and around the screws or um, you know some sort of gunk to maybe stop the rattling I don't like this yeah I don't like that idea because it can uh, melt out and damage your finish some people put um, Teflon on these screws, um, which may or may not work. I saw somebody doing it on a YouTube video and it seemed to work for them. Um, but since you can buy this piece, and the thing, the thing is, um, most of these bridges, the aftermarket bridges, will fit because most of them are made for imports. Um, so if you have an Epiphone or any kind of import, the, the post spacing is going to be um, the same. And a lot of these bridges are made to ma fit um, you know, any sort of uh, incremental difference uh, on an on a import bridge. Now, if you've got a US model, uh, you probably want to make sure that your post spacing works with the replacement that you're getting. Um, you know, there is the Nashville set up as well but you can buy bridges specifically for that uh, so as long as the you know this will the new bridge will fit on this post spacing and by the way it's probably a good idea if you change this bridge um, to use the new posts of the new bridge you're getting and a lot of these just screw up you don't have to retap you probably won't have to retap the holes uh, but maybe um, pull the post plugs out and put the new ones in just so that you've got a really tight fit between the new bridge you're putting on and the posts that were designed for that bridge. A lot of people get lazy and they just slam the new bridge over the old, old posts, which may work for you, but um, it's probably a good practice just to use the uh, whole apparatus uh, if you're buying a replacement. But I just thought I'd show you this because I ran into it, and I tend to run into it on Les Pauls. Even that IYV Les Paul that I have that I like, it has one string that has a, a very slight, not as pronounced as this guitar, but a very slight buzz. Um, and it's because, again, it's another one of these cheap uh, um, tunematic bridges with all these moving parts and the saddles that often have burrs in uh, as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, if you want it to be a painless replacement, you can probably pick up something with be a better, better saddle setup fairly cheap, I don't know, $20 or more, um, maybe even cheaper on Amazon if you want to try a roller bridge uh, and sort of get away from these v notched V saddles. Uh, you can get even cheaper, I think they sell them as low as $12. Um, whether you're really improving the parts or not at that price um, may be a bit of an experiment. Um, I'd read, read reviews on the piece you're getting. But if it's a really nice guitar, if it's like a guitar that you want to gig with, it's probably worth at least getting a Wilkinson or a Gotar um, 
replacement here if you're paying twenty forty dollars or even um gosh what's the name of that other brand that a lot of people do it's about sixty dollars um for this bridge they they i forget what the name of the brand is somebody will say it in the comments but they have a a tightening screw that tight sinks it really um tight to the the posts uh i forget the name of the brand now but they're very very popular a lot of mothers use them but if you say if you if you've got a really nice guitar and you and you want to um use it for gigging and stuff like that it's worth probably paying at least 20 40 60 dollars for a bridge that's going to get rid of any any issues and it, it'll give you it won't drastically improve your tone that's a bit of a myth um it might give you a bit more sustain it certainly will eradicate any buzzes from moving parts on these cheap bridges uh, that's what it's going to do it's going to clean up your sound some people swear by um, the ability to bend uh, and uh, intonation being slightly improved uh, as well which if you're paying for one of those gotar uh, bridges or something even higher quality uh, it should have better incremental uh, saddle uh, systems on it which gives you a lot more accurate intonation as well but i just thought to show this it came up um i don't normally replace uh bridges on guitars because uh, um unless you know you've got a, a buzz that just won't go away and it seems to be the case on this guitar so i will probably order this piece here pull out these posts and then put uh, the new one on probably keep the same stock tail the good thing about all these finishes is most of the the replacement bridges you can get like this is gold you can get the gold or the chrome or the brushed chrome or black um, normally you can get them in in various finishes so that you can match you know right like it would look weird to put a chrome one or a black one next to a gold uh, stop tail so i can probably get this piece here to match this uh, if you see what i'm saying another thing about this guitar is has a broken knob which is annoying so i've got a, another set of knobs coming for this without the numbers on them i'm just going for a plain black um, knob configuration on this um, these are things that i missed on the initial setup because i was concentrating on all that stuff down there um, and it happens sometimes when you go back through a guitar you can find other issues um, this I just happened to notice and then I and then I noticed that it, it's on in the wrong position because the housing uh, that goes over the uh, metal um, knob uh, is slightly broken so at least that knob needs to replace be replaced I could get one to match these these are fairly common but I thought I would just get a set of four um, and do something a little bit different with this so just a couple of issues that come up those of you who like to buy cheap guitars and mod them improve the parts you'll know all this stuff this won't be new to you um, because after i say the tuners um, and the pickups these are issues that you often run into the bridge setup uh, and also the knobs the switch sometimes as well and by the way you can change all you can buy kits where you get this piece these two pieces and this uh in different colors so if you get a, a les paul like this and you don't like how it looks say you wanted to change all of the uh matching color to something else like chrome or silver or red you can buy kits that have these all these plastic pieces to match and you can change the look of your guitar if you want to i don't normally do stuff like that but um you know, I've, I noticed on Amazon they have the kits um, that have all the plastic pieces for Les Pauls. Whether they'll fit your Les Paul is another issue. Uh, sometimes you have to do a bit of sanding on this piece here to fit the pickup housing. That's quite normal. Um, so you might get slight differences with a pick guard. Or you can take that damn thing off and go without a pick guard if you want. Uh, but anyway, just thought I'd mention this since... A lot of you are uh, either into modding or perhaps thinking about doing something to your budget guitars that you get and you find weird little issues like buzzing 
Um, and this is definitely a cheap bridge situation. And it can be remedied, I hope, I'm fairly confident, by just replacing this part here uh, to something better. Alright folks, see you on the next one.